Rotterdam is a delta city and located in the delta of the rivers Rhine and Meuse. Via the Nieuwe Waterweg, the city has open links to the sea and is influenced by the tide. The city is protected by a primary flood defense system consisting of dunes along the coast and dikes along the rivers. In addition, there are flexible barriers that can be closed when storm tides are expected. Within the dikes, the inner dike city is mostly below sea level. Here are many polders and outlet systems that drain water to and from the polders. These waterways are flanked by regional secondary dikes to prevent flooding of the inner dike areas. The responsibility for the management and maintenance of waterworks is owned by the water authorities and central government. Well, Rotterdam is uh, at the intersection of a river and sea, and in 1953 we had a big storm surge, and uh, it caused a lot of flooding, especially in the south area of uh, Rotterdam. And after that, we started to reinforce our system. We already had dunes, but we reinforced uh, them. We started to make our dikes, uh, and we made them stronger, even bigger, and we got a new storm surge barrier, which could help us to defend ourselves against future. Uh, storm surges. We are well protected and we will be in future. Uh, we have now the highest standards uh, in the world, but as a Delta City you are always vulnerable uh, because of climate change, so even we, we have to think about what we are going to do. I built the typical Delta City area of Rotterdam. We have the North Sea over here. We have the Nieuwe Waterweg, the Muse, which is running up uh, through the city. We have a storm surge barrier, the Maasland clearing, which closes when we have a storm surge. We expect a rise of uh, 35 up till 85 centimeters. Uh, we are not really sure what it's going to be. We have our storm surge barrier, which can handle 50 centimeters of sea level rise. And e every time when we have a storm surge, it will close. So we will be protected. Now we, nowadays, the frequency of closure is about once in 12 years and when the sea level is rising it will probably become a frequency of once in a year. So the harbour will not be that accessible anymore. Well, in a typical Dutch area we have a high river, low-lying country and here you can see that when a dike would breach it would cause a lot of casualties, a lot of economical damage because water is really rushing in into the city. Well, you can probably expect a couple of hundreds of people dying because of the flood. Well, next to the river system we also have a regional water system which is used for water inlet when it's a dry season but it's also used when there's a lot of rainfall in the polder area it's itself. Then water has to be pumped upwards to the system and from the system is pumped upwards to the river system. Well, you have to get rid of a lot of, a large quantity of water actually, so you have need to install quite large pumps and that's not enough. When there's a lot of rainfall, you can't cope with the, with the amount of water with your pumps, so we have to search for other strategies. Well, there are actually two types of challenges. One, we expect more and heavier rainfall and this rainwater we have to pump out from the polder area up to the canal and up towards the sea. And the second one is that we expect a more and drier seasons and that the drought can actually weaken our dike. Um, when a dike breaches here in the regional waterway, then we expect a lot of economical damage because infrastructure is hit. We have an airport, we have uh, roads, we have uh, rail transport and we have a lot of businesses and houses over here. But the water will actually not be, will not be that deep, so that's also the reason why we do not expect that many casualties. Everything is about dealing with uncertainties, because we do not know really how fast climate change will go. Um, but our current strategy is actually a really good one, so for future times we will invest again in our dike systems and in our storm surge barriers. Our current strategy is actually based on prevention. Eh? Our dike systems help us eh, to prevent flooding and even in future times we will uh, depend on this, uh, this type of system. 
There's actually one thing we will do differently. Now we look at the water. When the water is rising, we will make our dike even stronger. But in future time, we will look at where the high, highest risks are and we'll make the, the dike at that location even more stronger. So it will be higher standards over there. We have a problem in this city because you can look behind me and see that the buildings are actually on top of the dike uh, themselves. So when we strengthen our dike, we have to um, think about how to integrate them with spatial planning. One example of this integrated solution is our roof bar. It's actually a dike next to a shopping mall and on top of it there's a roof bar. The core of our strategy is actually prevention, but we also have to think about evacuation plans. That's really difficult in an area like this because we are a low-lying country. Our network of roads isn't capable uh, to evacuate people horizontally. So we are thinking about uh, evacuation vertically actually, so people will move upwards into buildings when a flood happens. So nowadays we have one of the highest standards in the world and with these types of solutions we will remain one of the safest areas in the world.